original anime are always a treat to watch, even if many fall flat by the end. So much of anime is adaptations of works that people can spoil or already have their futures written. There is more Jujutsu Kaisen after the anime, so there becomes the need to avoid being spoiled if you want your experience to remain pure. Granted, using JJK as an example here is bad, since even the manga chapters get leaked in advance, and that is so much fun. However, original anime don't have this problem, since there is no pre-written future beyond what the creators of the anime have decided. As an audience, we're being taken along for the ride blind. Could be watching the birth of a new masterpiece or just another anime to exist. And that's the fun of it, experiencing a story unfold without any clue as to where it will go. Scrolling through my anime list top 100 anime, there were only a handful of original anime, only three series in the top 50, and if you expand to the top 100, you only add about eight new series. But many of the original anime I've watched have left very strong impressions of me and are some of my favorite anime to ever exist. Another nice thing is that watching original anime on whatever social media platform you choose to use now, they all kind of suck. You get to watch everyone else enjoy it in real time as well. It is so much fun to watch the internet collectively lose their mind at plot developments or plot implosions, depending on the series. A recent highlight has been Bang Brave Bang Bravern, the gayest mecha series of all time unless you count the tension between Amaro and Char and then Bravern is probably still hornier for Isamiao. Bravern has been a series that I've never truly been able to predict where it is going but it has always been fun to be on the ride regardless. I found it through rumblings on Twitter about just how much homo ride tension the series held and it has continued to surprise me with just how overt it was. You have to be suffering some serious delusions to have any other take than that Bravern and Isami are madly in love with each other. But even beyond that, Bang Bravern has taken some truly wild turns over the course of the season, from adding some really fun new villains and character backstories, to making it explicit as humanly possible that Bravern and Isami are in love. There are no questions here, it is just a fact. And I implore anyone and everyone to start watching it. It is so much fun. And we'll probably never get another season. Which, to some extent, is kind of the saddest situation with some original anime. Where so many are truly great series, but we never see more of it. Unless it breaks free and becomes a franchise like Psychopaths or Code Geass. And depending on who you ask, this constraint to one season is for the best. I still love Psychopaths in its current form even with all the seasons. But I also can't disagree that the first season is its peak. It's my favorite original anime and my second favorite anime of all time for a reason. You stories feel so airtight in every aspect than the first season of Psychopath. I wish I could have been there to watch Psychopath airing, but I still laud it as a masterpiece, even without that communal experience of watching it week to week. It's a production where Every aspect was firing on all cylinders to deliver a perfect product. Which is another reason why I love original anime. It feels like there's so much freedom to allow the creativity of the staff to flourish. There's no adaptation to take from, so everything must be created from the mind. A panel-for-panel panel adaptation can't exist when there are no panels to take from. You have to put your trust in the team creating the series to deliver their vision. It's a much more risky venture than just adapting the new hit Shonen Jump manga, but it also allows her series to get much more experimental, for better or worse. On the better side of things, you get shows like Sunny Boy and its individual episodes that feel so distinct and like each episode the various directors were just allowed to run free to show their worth to the world around them. It had people like Keiichiro Osato who has now taken the world by storm with Bochi the Rock and Free Rin. And then you get shows like Space Dandy, which basically just did what Sunny Boy did but several years earlier and having the big names of that time like Sayo Yamamoto or Shingo Natsume. You can still find all these people directing adapted anime, but it feels like we get a better grasp of how they direct when they're given original material to work with. And the creative team involved just seem more willing to use these original anime to showcase the 
the budding talent of the anime industry and to just let their let the goats run wild, basically. I love being vaguely understanding of anime production and directors and all that because I can recognize names of directors and try to follow them into a show, even if it may not seem up my alley. I'm sure many people found out about Gen Urobuchi through shows like Madoka Magica, Psycho Pass, and Fate Zero. And I'm sure that also led many of us to remember a very specific anime. That anime being Aldnoa Zero. I am an Aldnoa Zero defender, but that's probably because it was one of the earliest anime I watched, and I have some semblance of nostalgia. And also the music is a very good. But I remember watching it weekly and before it aired, Urobuchi's name being attached to it so much and probably got so many more people to watch it than would have otherwise. Even if we know now that he only wrote the first three episodes and then Katsuhiko Takayama wrote the rest. I still think it's a fun series, even if the second season doesn't make a whole lot of sense and is very silly. But it was still such a fun time to watch the internet collectively be very confused as to how Al Noah Zero ended up being the story that it was. But of course, if we want to talk about original anime starting strong and then becoming something else entirely, we do have to mention One Direct Priority. For those who missed watching it weekly, Wonder Egg Priority felt like watching a new classic on the horizon. Its production fell apart, and then the final episode was delayed to a much later date. And then when it finally dropped, it was uh, not what anyone expected, and certainly not what a large portion of people wanted. Just going off of Annie List and My Annie List ratings, the show itself, before the final episode, has a 74 on Annie List and a 7.59 on My Anime List while the sequel has a 49 and a 5.13 respectively. For my personal ratings, it went from a 9 to a 2. It really felt like we were about to witness a new classic original anime to add to the pantheon of greats, but we're blasted with something entirely different by the end. Some of the score drop, at least for me, is probably due to how jarring it was, but I can only really speak for myself on that one. But even despite its jarring ending i'm glad that a show like wonder egg priority was created in the first place i'm glad that we're still getting creative original anime where it's like every season we get a few handfuls of shows that dare to challenge the waters against the sea of manga light novel web novel etc adaptations and even if they end up being terrible i love that they exist i'll still be watching the adaptations of series i like but I'll always try and throw in an original anime or two just to give them a shot. I just like seeing original stories in anime and finding inspiration from them, whether that be in their flaws or their successes as stories. And as someone who wants to write his own stories, you can find a lot from original anime, especially ones that fall victim to their own ambition. Granted, I'm not writing an anime with a constrained time period, I'm just writing stories. So really... I can take inspiration from any piece of media, but I feel a special surge of inspiration for those who kind of carve their own path by being a show that is so committed to its premise without ever really wavering. That This is the story they wanted to tell, and they will tell it. And it feels like they had a blast making Bang Brave Iron. Even if we only ever see a few virtual anime a season, I'm glad they exist in an era of humanity where it feels like so much of the media we're presented with are adaptations of works from other mediums. It's nice to see an anime that is uniquely an anime. Even if it burns brightly enough to become a new classic of the medium, or it falls apart under the weight of its ambition. Because at the end of the day, there was still that ambition to tell a story. If I had to give a list of original anime that I think are worth checking out, it would probably look something like this. I'm going to exclude Space Dandy, Cowboy Bebop, and Utena because I haven't finished them yet. But they should be on any list that I'm actively watching Space Dandy at the time of writing. I just haven't finished it, and I'm not going to recommend it without being done. But to begin with, I think every single human being alive should watch the first season of Psycho Pass. I think it may just be a perfect season of television. And Akane and Kogami are two of my favorite characters in any medium period and that's not even mentioning the dynamic between Kogami and Makishima which is probably one of my favorites in anime they play off each other expertly and uh you all need to watch it next I'd add a few classics like Neon Genesis Evangelion Gurren Lagann Code Geass I 
think they speak for themselves. They've cemented their place in history, but if for some reason you haven't watched them, you should. Next, I'd add Jojo Kageki Review Starlight because the direction of that show and the movie are great, and the story is a blast from start to finish. I'd also add Odd Taxi in a Place Further Than Universe because they're very engaging shows despite being two very different ones, where the former is just a really thrilling ride and the latter just made me cry a lot. I'd also recommend Death Parade, and I feel like it's a good opener for being a little experimental but still being pretty rooted in a certain thing. As for some personal picks, I love Suki Kakire. I think it's a great pure little romance story. And then a similar line with Tamako Love Story, which I just think is a great film. And I'd also give out Zanki no Terror because it has my favorite OST in anime period, even if it is the anime about terrorism. And for my wildest one, I'm an avid glass lip defender, even if the world may like it, so you should watch it, you know, give it a shot. And then lastly, I would say watch basically any Macross series entry. Personally, I've only seen Macross Delta, but I love it, and I think a lot about it, despite it airing almost a decade ago. And since somehow the stars have aligned to put them on Disney Plus in 2024, eventually you will have no excuse not to. Which is crazy to me, but get to watching it now, or whenever it comes out on your preferred streaming service that is Disney Plus or Hulu, depending on where you live. All in all, the moral of today's story is to watch more original anime, as if that wasn't already obvious by this point. And then start spreading your newfound love of it to others so that more people keep watching original anime.